Hello and welcome to Stuff You Should Know About Oil and Gas Production. This podcast is brought to you by Kimray. You can visit us at kimray.com to see our full library of training materials, videos, and other resources. On today's episode, we're going to talk about EPA standards, mounting a regulator vertically, and how to find your maximum valve volume, and a couple of other customer questions as well. I'm Curtis Winkle, Kyle Andrews. Good to see you. Good to see you too, Curtis. So we're here in person. Uh, If you're just listening to this, this will be a video version of the podcast as well that we're recording today. So it'll be available on YouTube and the Kimray website and probably a couple of other outlets as well. Uh, If you watch Kimray videos regularly, this may look familiar. We're in the studio where you are typically on camera repairing valves, explaining complex (laughs) problems that people encounter. Um, And we're going to use it today to, to record the podcast. So... If somebody asks you why, why do you guys want to do this on video, what would you mm-hmm. say to that question? So uh, customer interaction is really important to Kimray. Um, you know, we value the customer. We value uh, sharing knowledge with the customers. Uh, and, you know, we've not recently, we've been doing podcasts, what, almost two years? Year and a half, something year like that. Year and a half. Yeah. I've been doing that for a while, but we just wanted to uh, introduce you know, another format uh, for people to consume that content and hopefully we can reach more people with it and, and be more helpful. Yeah, yeah. As a company, we're, we're pretty passionate about sharing knowledge. We think that's really good for the industry. That's why we don't do, you know, paywalls or a lot of uh, content you have to get over paywalls for. Um, you know, the other thing that I was thinking about is, is I, we, as we talked just before the show, I listen to podcasts a lot on my commute. Mm-hmm. You don't really, you, you are more of a video guy. Yep. Uh, our producer Denny is going to watch a lot on video. So he, he encounters podcasts on YouTube. And so, yeah, we're just trying to make this as, as uh, helpful and valuable in whatever medium you choose to, to take it in. Kyle, I, you've been on video hundreds of times since we've been doing this since about 2018. Yeah. Um, do you have any tips for me? This is, I think, my second time on video. Anything I should do, shouldn't do? Um, you know, the biggest one, and it's kind of a cliche, but, you know, just relax. Okay. Um, take a deep breath. Try to get comfortable. Um, you know, with this kind of format where you have somebody to talk to and to look at, and you're not just looking at a camera or a teleprompter or whatever, uh, it's much easier to have a conversation and to kind of forget about the cameras. Okay. Um, so this is like a good segue into doing standalone videos for you, I think. Okay. Um, but yeah, just uh, just relax. Um, just know that uh, just be yourself. Okay. We'll, yeah. we'll see how that goes. I've already touched the mic multiple times. I know producer Denny has gotten on to me. Don't do that. So... Today's subject is customer questions. We're going to answer five common customer questions that you have collected, that our applications team answers regularly. So yep. if, if, we, if we're getting regularly on the phone, we know a lot of people probably have that same question. And that leads me to ask you for a favor. Do you have any challenges, any questions about oil and gas control that you've had trouble solving? We would love to get just even your toughest questions about oil and gas control. We'll get you an answer right away, just as quickly as we can. And then we'll also give you a shout out on the show and feature your question on the show, because again, that's going to help others that have the same question you've encountered. So let's jump into our questions today, Kyle. Our first one, hot topic, so emissions. So the question as stated is, how does Kimray classify their venting devices according to EPA standards? Yeah, so according to the EPA standards, um, our regulators are um, intermittent vent regulators. So they intermittently vent um, a certain amount of natural gas. So when they change position, they go from you know, closed to opening, uh, they have, they're going to vent a certain amount of gas. Uh, it's not a bleed regulator. It's not, you know, I've heard some people call it a, an intermittent bleed. Um, it's intermittent vent. Because uh, it's the way that the internally, the way that the pilot plug works inside the regulator, um, both ports, the supply side and the vent side, can't be open at the same time. Um, so it'll, it'll never bleed unless you know it's malfunctioned and it's broken. Right, you know? right. And so that's for both regulators and high pressure control valves. 
Uh, so the high pressure control valves, um, what they're communicating with or what's controlling them would be our pilots. And those have the pilot plug in there as well. So this, that classification um, works for any product that has the pilot plug. In. Okay. So that'd be our regulators, our pilots, um, anything with the pilot plug. Pneumatic, pneumatic devices. Yeah. Uh, that's an important distinction, that, that bleed versus vent. And so we're, we're not classified as bleed valves. Correct. Um, it is a, an intermittent vent. Yep. So very good. I know a lot, a lot of those conversations are happening right now, and hopefully that distinction is helpful. And we'll be coming out with more information ongoing as, uh, as this issue um, mm. is, is addressed by various parts of the company. Honestly. Yeah, and to go along with that, on our website, we, you know, we have an official document. So if you're, if you're looking for something or your company's looking for something, you know, an official statement. We have that on our website. Uh, it goes into, you know, the EPA classifications and, and where we fall into that. Um, so you can find that on our website. Very good. We'll link to that in, in the show notes today. All right. Second question, a common customer question is, how do I find what repair kit I need if I need to repair my valve? Yep. So you can uh, go to our website. Um, if you search the a serial number, or if you know the item code um, or the description of your valve, you can search that on our website and pull up the valve page, and you can find the the repair kit there. Um, that's probably the easiest way if you don't know off the top of your head. Um, also, just calling one of our stores or distributors um, and giving them that information as well, they can they can look it up and uh, and find their correct repair kit. Very good. Okay, number three, can Kimray regulators be mounted vertically? So explain what you mean by vertical, because we get in that conversation sometimes, yeah. and then is that okay to do? So by vertically, so uh, normally they're, they're mounted horizontally. So the, the inlet side and the outlet side um, is horizontal, or the piping is horizontal. When we say vertically, so the, the inlet and outlet piping are uh, vertical. It's kind of nice we have video. We can do, illustrate it this way. So if exactly. you're listening, you won't see what our hands are doing. But <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and so you can, I mean, you can do anything with our regulator. You can mount it however you want. But the issue becomes um, premature wear on the stem. Um, with the one inch and two inch regulators, it may not happen as fast. Um, but the oil bowl and its job is to lubricate an O-ring and the stem uh, that travels up and down. So whenever you're mounting it vertically like that, a couple things you can do to, to make it last a little bit longer. Um, is one, you wanna make sure the breather plug for the oil bowl is pointed up so oil's not just spilling out on the ground. Uh, and then you wanna add extra oil into that oil bowl. So that way, even though it's on its side, uh, the oil level inside the oil bowl is still on that communication hole or above it. Uh, and then the breather plug pointed up. Um, that will help with it lasting longer and it not wearing out as fast. Um, with the larger regulators, it's a bigger issue because there's so much weight. Um, the weight of the stem, the weight of the seat, uh, it's gonna wear out one side of that O-ring pretty quickly and um, then you're, you're gonna have issues with your regulator. Okay, so to recap, one and two inch, you can make sure you have extra oil. Is that an ongoing need for that oil? Um, no, it's, okay. it should be just once uh, unless it's leaking out somehow. Um, okay. and, and, and that's not just for the one and two inch. I would do that okay. with, with all sizes up to six inch. Okay. Um, the issue with three, four, and six inches, there's so much larger and there's so much more weight yeah. uh, on that stem. Uh, it's it's going to wear out faster than the one and two inch. So above two inch, we'd say we really discourage it, encourage you to just change your piping. Yeah, and that's really the reason why people ask that question is because they have existing piping uh, that they don't want to have to redo, or maybe there's uh, room constraints. You know, maybe they're working inside a housing, uh, or there's other equipment in the way, and they physically can't change the piping. Uh, so that's why they ask that question. Um, so you, you can install it vertically. It's not recommended, um, but if you do install it vertically, I uh, recommend adding extra oil so it can still lubricate the stem as well as making sure that the breather port um, or the breather plug for the oil bowl is pointed up or on the top side of the valve. 
All right, so number four, common customer question, how can I find the maximum volume I can move through my valve? Mm -hmm. So this is a, a question uh, that you know comes from a place of somebody either trying to find out um, if they can handle increased flow, um, or it comes from a place of somebody wanting to know um, how large they should size their uh, flare or combustor to, ha in, to handle gas volumes in a failure scenario. Mm. So if the valve were to come completely open, you know, how much gas can it move? Um, to find that out, you can use our sizing calculator on our website. Um, you just find the, the CV information for the regulator or valve you have, and then input, you know, you're, it's going to ask for temperature, upstream pressure, downstream pressure, and that's just going to, uh, and then you input the maximum CV for that valve. That's going to give you a, a flow rate. Under those conditions, what would that valve be flowing? Very good. Okay, we'll link to that uh, sizing mm -hmm. area of the website as well. And then last question for today, Kyle, how can I find more information on my valves on the Kimray website? Yep. So we our website's newer now. It's been out for a while, but um, the, the search function on our website has been improved quite a bit. So you can put... Um, partial descriptions of your valve in the search bar. You can do uh, part numbers. Um, and so that, that'll help you find your valve. Um, but just going to that valve page, every valve ha has a specific page to it. It has um, all the dimensional information about the valve. It has the repair kit, like we mentioned. Um, it has all the technical documents for that valve. Um, and then in any uh, related uh, product videos are also linked um, down at the bottom, towards the bottom of the page. And so all the information that you, that you may need is, is right there in one spot. Very good. Yeah, we try to populate that with as much information about each product as we can. Yep. So. Anything else for today's show, Kyle? Oh, it's, it's good to like being yeah. here with you and yeah. speaking with you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're usually away from each other when we record these things. Yeah. So, well, we hope that was helpful. Um, thank you for listening and watching. If you're doing that, you can find links to the, the videos, products, and other resources we mentioned in today's show notes. And we hope you'll join us next time on Stuff You Should Know About Oil and Gas Production.